It's hard for me to imagine the Berkeley campus without the Women's Faculty Club. It's just such an important, iconic piece of our life here. Initially served only women, now serves the entire campus, and still makes a special effort to say that women matter, that women have a unique perspective. We needed a faculty club back when men and women didn't have the same faculty club because we had women faculty really early. The Women's Faculty Club today on the Berkeley campus is, first of all, continues to be a place of um, gathering for different communities, a place for lunch. You never need just one place to go to lunch, so multiple choices are always a good thing, at least in my book. But I also believe that places keep history alive. And the Women's Faculty Club for all those years, from 1919 to um, 1970, which is uh, virtually 50 years, that it was the place that women faculty had to go to have lunch with colleagues, to have professional gatherings, to have a club. And I think it's important to keep that history alive. This is one of the great legacies that California has left us. The Men's Faculty Club, known as the Faculty Club, was founded in about 1904. Women were not allowed to become members. Women were not allowed in the dining room. They were not allowed in the lounge. When women faculty were struggling to be accepted, recognized as scholars and teachers in their own right, as always, Berkeley was ahead of the curve. Lucy Ward Stebbins was the first president of the Women's Faculty Club and really the moving force behind its foundation. The first vice president of the club was Jessica Pashato. She was the first woman professor hired in 1904. She was the first female full professor. These women were motivated to form our club not in a political sense by a demand for equal treatment, but from their desire to realize their own potential as academics. They understood that you have to organize, you have to ask for what you want. You have All of their correspondence stresses this theme. They felt that very deeply and it would be better for Cal if they could flourish here. They had to get permission from the regents to build on campus land. They needed then to raise money to build the structure. It was built during a time when John Galen Howard was the campus architect. They made a contract, formal contract with him to design the buildings. Current beautiful brown shingle, classic Berkeley style clubhouse with 25 living rooms on the second floor and then dining room, lounge, etc. on the first floor. These brown shingle buildings are more um, in harmony with nature. They acknowledge the landscape in which they find themselves. It's pretty easy to see how different it is from a lot of the other buildings on campus. It's not this grandiose granite marble that's spread across this flat elevation. Here in this cove of nature, we have a very unique style that is extremely important to the history of architecture in the Bay Area. You walk into the building and the footprint itself is like going into some historical museum. If we wanted to have a group of women together, this was the obvious place to do it. The club provides that necessary space for women to gather. They have been able to support each other as they have changed both the face of Cal and the face of the world. We heard about people's terrible stories about what was going on in their department. When I came to campus, only 3% of the faculty were women. By the late 60s and early 70s, women's demands for equality and social change became more political. Women faculty used the club as a place to meet, talk, and organize their political strategies. We used to meet here over lunch and talk about either our research or what could we do to bring more women on the campus. So it was a safe place to come to to have our meetings. We planned how to make changes. And By the late 1970s, both faculty clubs became available to men and women on campus. And the Women's Faculty Club began 
its transformation into a unique resource for the entire Berkeley campus. One of the first things I did when I joined Berkeley was I joined the Women's Faculty Club. Keeping it the Women's Faculty Club is about maintaining a balance. And the balance is between recognizing, preserving, celebrating our history on the one hand and remaining open to everybody on the other. It's a place of hospitality to me. And I think that when I became manager, that's part of what I wanted people to feel. I started staying here and it became home. You know, of course, the reason I started staying here was because I knew it would become home. If there's anything that, that can go wrong is that we lose some of that community, the place where the physicists talk to the historians, talk to the English professors. You know, it was where I went for my first lunch when I was here on a job interview. It's where my husband and I went when we got tenure and wanted to celebrate that afternoon. It's, you know, where our good friends celebrated getting the Nobel Prize on those special occasions uh, around the campus. There's a buffet lunch. Um, usually the options are quite good. You know, one of my favorite things is to take my graduate student instructors out to lunch here. I find they'll talk to me if I feed them. The day they come here for lunch and they sit down and you serve them a meal, they feel very special. And it's something they never forget. My predecessor I was a huge fan of the Jello, and so uh, I follow in his footsteps because I love the Jello here as well. The food at these events is prepared by our staff. We use sustainable, local, and organic products. The major functioning of our events at the club are all by student employees. We hire over 30 students who help serve dinners, serve events. And it provides this whole ambiance and service that I know that our members and the campus community really enjoys. The club is a great place to hold special events. Many members use it for family celebrations, for weddings, for wedding anniversaries, for parties of all kinds. The club has two series of really special programs. Arts in the Afternoon, which is typically musical performances, and Academic Lives, which are lectures and panels on all aspects of the work that people are doing and on uh, issues important to women. This room is so inspiring that we're in. It's a beautiful place for cultural programs, and again, it's a very welcoming place. It's basically, a, it's like a beautiful 18th century room that's appropriate for chamber music. When we talk about chamber music, it all starts with the concept of the chamber. They're three feet from the front row, playing for a person where you can look at the person in the eyes. That's what we get to do at the Women's Faculty Club. I love being manager at the club. I think there is a great deal of history there, but it's history that inspires me. You walk in and the people are so nice. And Mary Remy is just amazing. She provided the sort of professional discipline that was really important for us to build our professional skills. Mary, you know, really wants to help you out and help students and work with your schedule. It was really helpful to make the extra money and have a residence here, and it just it made me more focused. The Women's Faculty Club was the first job that I got as a student. That was really important, especially coming from a genocide survivor, struggling with a lot of issues of acculturation and poverty, so, so having that support was really important. The club is an opportunity, a vehicle toward my ultimate goal, and my ultimate goal is to be a doctor. The Women's Faculty Club play a big role in the work that I do even now when it comes to advocacy work, community organizing work, you know, building women empowerment and, and leadership. We should not lose heart about the local institutions upon which our human relations were built as faculty. It's special uh, in terms of any university in the world that it has a facility like this which is unique, which is very efficiently and well run, and which is accessible to the entire campus community. We need a women's faculty club, lest we forget the fact that there was never a space for women before this club. The women's faculty club, to me, has always said, women are such a valued part of this uh, community, of this faculty community, 
that there has been this beautiful architectural landmark that was built for them. We are very, very proud of its 100-year legacy. It has struggled, it has succeeded, it is a fantastic contribution to the campus, both intellectually, culturally, and physically. It really should go on for another 100 years. We want to improve the grounds and create a beautiful outdoor patio as an event space for the whole campus to enjoy. Upgrade its furnishings, keep it earthquake safe, all the things that you need to do, uh, you know, to keep, a, keep an institution like this really functioning. We have been financially independent and we want to continue that. We want to continue to expand our programs, to improve our facilities, and in order to do that, we need support. So I feel if we could support Women's Faculty Club in the 1920s, when the country was something like one-eighth as rich as we are now, we ought to be able to support it now. The Berkeley campus is like a big city. Um, and it has many neighborhoods. And to create the sense of community, you have to cultivate its neighborhoods. The Women's Faculty Club is a very, very important neighborhood on the Berkeley campus.